in our prayer, we are moved, we are changed, we are transformed, we grow. So it does not add glory to God because God is already complete in glory. But we add to ourselves because we are united to our Creator, to our Heavenly Father. And I think for many, that's why they find prayer boring. It's because it's a duty. And I go through ACTS and I memorize those prayers. Though I do memorize prayers, by the way. But then when it becomes a delight, it's something far more beautiful and experiential, which God wants us to have. Why is Jesus telling us to pray for the daily bread and now we should not worry about what to eat? But what we have to understand in here is that in verse 31, when he reminded us not to worry what to eat, he is referring to the physical food. We should not worry about those things. And then in verse 11, when he said we need to ask God for our daily bread, he actually means himself or his word. This podcast is powered by Podcast Network Asia and Podmetrics. Coming inside the narrow door, everybody. My name is Sam O, oh, and this is an ecumenical podcast. Joining me today are my friends. We have lay preacher J. Paul Hernandez. He is uh, from the Feast, which is a Catholic prayer gathering. We have instructor Harold Resho from New Heaven and New Earth, Shinshanti Church of Jesus. They're non-denominational. And Pastor Dennis C. is the head pastor of Victory Green Hills, which is an evangelical uh, Protestant church. And yes, we sit down every episode and we talk about our faith and we manage not to kill each other, but that's probably because we're on Zoom. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're able to do this. Okay, all right. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? Everyone Pretty looks good. good. Yeah. And I'm running out of plain shirts. That's why I'm wearing uh, something with color. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No. So instructor Harold earlier, before we started recording, was like, you know, Brother J. Paul, happy birthday. And I legit freaked out for like two seconds because I thought I forgot his birthday. But no, it was because he was wearing red. But this is like, this is more a Chinese thing, Pastor D, isn't it? Yes, yes. So I think this podcast will be very lucky. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Which Christians don't believe in. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> 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 hey, God bless. <laughs> that is hilarious. No, but okay. Um, just, you know, as of this recording, we just released our first End Times episode. And I got a bunch of emails, which, you know, I'm not really going to get into. But, oh, oh, look who's here. Hi. Hi. I love these, like, random, you know, um, pop-ups that we have on the show. I love it. Um, and I'm just hearing from a lot of people who are really interested in you know, this whole end times thing. Um, they want things elaborated on or whatever. We have two more episodes on that. Uh, we discuss what the Bible says about end times. And so we're going to give that a little break. But I just wanted to thank these people who are reaching out to us and expressing interest. And um, I think they got some really interesting insights on what end times is. Um, I personally enjoyed those conversations a lot. So today though, yes, we're leaving that behind for now. And we're talking about something that is really important um, in our faith life as Christians and it's prayer. I have a feeling that, you know, many of us are probably doing this more now than ever. And I guess I just wanted to make sure that we're all doing it right. And, you know, also talk about what prayer is because, I think for me, it's just praying. When I'm praying, I'm talking to God. And, you know, but maybe there's a, there's a right way to do that. There's a better way to do that. Um, and I have a feeling our friends are going to do a better job than just praying is talking to God, guys. So <laughs> maybe we can start there. You know, how would you guys define prayer? Before, before I, we speak, um, I think I just want to say something just because of ministry. Uh -huh. A lot of people have been messaging me right now or messaging our, our small group leaders that they are they don't want to pray because they're just angry at God right now. Um, so just really because of the frustration, they they're just want to pray. So I just maybe that's you who are also speaking to right now. You don't want to pray. And maybe we can unravel what prayer really is, especially because of this pandemic has been hurting you a lot. Mm. So yeah, sorry. 
Anyone no, can start. No, I think that's a really interesting angle because um, if we think of prayer as talking to God, um, why do we feel like we can't express things that are not maybe pleasant, if you know what I mean? Maybe we think praying is always about telling God the good stuff, but maybe he wants to know the things that are bothering us too. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, who wants to start by telling us what prayer is in essence? Yeah, okay. uh, let me try. Let me start. Yeah, I think prayer is just the medium through which we experience and connect to God, right? It's like a conversation with God. Uh, it's not formal. It's not institutionalized because some people do that, you know, when they pray, you know, they have this certain voice and tone. And I see that in church all the time, you know, we'll be laughing, we'll be having fun. And then, oh, I pray not. Lord, <laughs> you know, the tone goes down. It's as if you know, they've entered this place that's, that, that wasn't there at that uh, prior to that moment of prayer. So many people do struggle with prayer because they are focusing on prayer and they're not focusing on God. And maybe that's something that we hope to get here in this conversation that really it's about God. It's about my conversation with God and my communication with God rather than styles of prayer and how prayer should sound like or patterns of prayer that we have. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Instructor Harold, do you want to follow? Yes, so for us, the prayer is, you were right, you got the point. It's like a communication with God, and this is very essential for us believers, and this is actually the manifestation of our faith in Him. So when we look into the Bible, there are actually two kinds of prayers. The first one, which uh, I want to discuss first, is about the righteous prayer. If we will go to Proverbs chapter 15, we can find there that the Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. And in the same book, it says that a uh, righteous desire will be granted. So um, if we look at it, the Lord will be able to hear the prayer of the righteous. And not only that, in Psalms chapter 34, it says that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and he hears intently in their cry. So we now might be thinking, then what could a righteous person do? In the same book, in Psalms, it says that a righteous person will be able to utter wisdom. And not only that, that the law of their God is found in their hearts. So what is that law? In Psalms 119, it says that the law is the truth. And what is the truth? In John chapter 17, verse 17, the word is truth. That's why when we pray, it's important that we include the word in our prayer and the understanding of God's will in our lives so that it could be righteous in his eyes and then he will be able to answer our prayers. So basically, that's the kind of prayer that we ultimately uh, go for our lives. Nice. I mean, you know, it's episode 11, so I guess it's not surprising anymore that, you know, we're talking about Instructor Harold including the word in whatever we're talking about. And you're hitting the ground running today with the Bible verses <laughs> instructor. Harold. Long sleeves. It, it really energizes him. <laughs> Brother J. Paul. Brother J. Paul. No, I, I love this topic. I love prayer because I've been dealing with, um, I, when I was growing up as a Christian, I was a lazy prayer person. I really did not like praying. I would fall asleep all the time. because just, that's just me. Um, but you know, honestly, so prayer is really connecting with God. It's it's really uniting, as, as what my brothers have been saying. And um, as a Catholic, I guess I just have to discuss this. We we we're, we're we're known to be formula prayer people, and it's not because we we don't connect directly to God. It's just more of when Christianity was starting, people were illiterate. You know, uh, early church people did not know. A lot of things. So the Catholic faith, the Catholic tradition, had to figure out ways of um, prayer formulas so that the people who did not understand the Bible can be united to the church. And I, and then connecting that with my brothers is that yes, it's the problem. Sometimes we're so focused on how we're praying, the, the formula that we forget and everything that we forget who we pray to. Um, I remember. There are some Christian groups that I've given talks to that they have this weird formula. If you don't sing, come Holy Spirit, God will not be like, 
what? <laughs> if, if we, and then when they're praying, the tongues, the praying in Holy Spirit tongues, the volume should be really high or else, you know, that the power will not be like, what? Okay, no, if, if you have that kind of thought, it's very fear-based, it's form. God is not, uh, um, not just, it's, he's not contained. All right, it, so it's really praying to unite to the, the creator, to our God. You know, yeah, you know what, I was actually going to bring that up about how as Catholics, we have a, a list of prayers that we pray over and over. It's the same everywhere you go in the world. Uh, we do a lot of repetitive prayer, like the rosary and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that ha that's how it came about, where the early Christians, there were a lot of illiterate people. And, you know, we had to, yeah, you, as you say, unite them to the church. And so the church provided these prayers for them. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, yes. So, the, you know, the, the common denominator is this is how we communicate with God, right? Mm -hmm. I think a question maybe that some people might be asking is, well, isn't God characterized as someone who knows everything? He knows my thoughts. He knows the desires in my heart. He knows what I'll do even before I think about doing it. Why do I still have to pray and tell him everything and communicate with him? You know, how would you answer a question like that? Well, I think the very nature of God, he's a relational God. He wants to hear our thoughts. He wants to spend time with us. And that's why he invites us always to come to him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? There's a lot of invitation that Jesus makes in scripture, telling us to come into his presence, right? where we are summoned. Even when we go to church, it's really the king of kings summoning us to fellowship with him. And that's how God is since Genesis, through the Trinitarian God, where we're where he's very relationship-centered, right? Where he calls us and tells us, we are friends. You're no longer slaves. I call you my friends. And what do friends do? They don't just bark orders to each other. They want to commune with each other. They want to have fellowship with each other. And so there's always that, you know, God doesn't need it, but God wants it, right? To have fellowship with his people and with us. And that's why prayer should be seen as that way. It's not, as what j Paul was saying, it's not a formula. It's not trying to focus on the prayer, but rather that on the person, which is God, that we pray to, right? So it's a, a, like example in a family meal, if conversations are required and that's the main point, it's because the focus is the conversation rather than the person. What happens is people are forced into it and they don't get to enjoy the conversation because the focus is we need to have a conversation. Rather than I want to converse with you, I want to talk to you and let's build an atmosphere where this could actually happen, that we truly enjoy each other. And the only way to do that in prayer is to get to know God and get to know Him, right? So I think that's the starting point of prayer. The only time a person prays is a time when he says, I really want to know this God and I need this God and I'll pray to this God. And we might have different reasons why we pray for some. Like I started with selfish reasons why I pray. You know, Lord, I just need to pass the exam. Lord, please help me. You know, those, those were my prayers. Or Lord, I need this toy. Lord, I need that. It is so unscriptural. Many of the things that I were asking for were idols of my heart. But that's how I started out in prayer. Because I didn't know. I, I didn't have the truth. I wasn't righteous as what Harold was saying. And so I started that way, but the journey and the process of maturing and getting to know this God changes us. And that's the beauty of prayer. That yeah. is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay, Instructor Harold, what would you like to add to that? Um, yes. So when we actually pray again, this is the way of, our, um, of showing our faith to God. And when, when we look into the Bible, God also wants to see what's in our hearts, what's our intent. Why are we doing this? And when we pray to God, we don't want to rely on our own. We want to show him that we want his will to be done in our lives. And I think a very good example that uh, I can share or we can share to the listeners right now is Jesus himself. He is the son of God. 
but he himself actually prayed to God um, in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was crucified. He was praying that um, you may take away this cup of suffering from me, but not my will, but your will be done. And then even on the cross, when he was already crucified, he even prayed for the people uh, to God to forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. So Jesus himself is doing the prayer. And um, this is showing that praying is important because that is how we should be um, communicating with God as our spiritual father. Brother J. Paul. This is a very uh, usual argument of atheists that why should I pray to a God that needs my prayer, my worship, but then it comes with, that, that, that's a very wrong mindset because number one, God is not created. God is, he is, I am who I am. So God does not need our prayer, but we need the prayer and we, God, this is how amazing our God is. God wants us because in our prayer, we are moved, we are changed, we are transformed, we, we grow. So God, it does not add glory to God because God is already complete in glory already as who he is. So when we pray, we do not add to him, but we add to ourselves because we are united by, to our creator, to our heavenly father. Wow, that's really profound. Like, yeah, God, when we pray, it doesn't add to God, it adds to us. It's still, it's still for us. Because you're right. God doesn't need anything from us. My goodness. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. I'm getting goosebumps. Well, yeah. Speaking of Jesus, Jesus actually prayed every day during his, in the New Testament times. He would wake up early in the morning to pray to his father. So if you look at that, Jesus is maybe one of the most dependent human God who ever lived. The human who ever lived. He is inviting us in the same way to live that kind of dependency to the Heavenly Father. He's telling us, you can't do this on your own. We don't have the power. We don't have the resources. We don't have the grace to do this on our own. So when you know that, that us, like Jesus, can't live life on our own, then prayer makes complete sense. I, I need prayer. You know, if prayer, if I know that, and this was a challenge I made to our church uh, last January. If we really know that God is God and it is God who will do things and it is God who will give the breakthroughs, it is God who will open the doors, then we've got to show it with our lifestyle of prayer. And we called for a weekly prayer meeting that we're still doing until now, even with the lockdown. It's saying, Lord, we are so dependent on you that we're going to come together, not just privately in prayer, but corporately in prayer because we can't do life on our own. We need you, God. Oh, oh my gosh, what it's been like, like 10 minutes into recording and I'm reflecting so much already. I don't pray nearly enough. Oh my goodness. Um, let's talk about the different ways we pray, right? Because I think, you know, as Catholics and, you know, as the different churches that we are, we, as, although I think the idea is different, we pray in different ways. And I just thought maybe it'd be interesting to discuss that. Like Brother J. Paul, right? As Catholics, we always start the prayer with a sign of the cross. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about like why this is significant and why we do that? Lala, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's really, uh, it's a profession of our faith. It's, um, it, you want to be identified with Christ, your, your God. It, it's, uh, remembrance every time we do the sign of the cross we do it in remembrance of our baptism that we were baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit um, it is our profession of our relationship it is a profession of the power of the cross in our lives um, for example why do we pray before meals why do we do the sign of the cross very basic because that simple gesture is a reminder that everything that we're eating came from God, that the money that we earn to, to, to cook that food, to buy that food came from God. So it's um, connecting back to God because as, as we know, um, through the centuries, life has already been busy. The differences of busyness just changed from analog to digital, but we just remind ourselves every single moment when we do the sign of the cross, 
that we are crucified with Christ. Ooh. Do you guys have any unique things that you do when you pray? I feel like the sign of the cross is a very uniquely Catholic thing. What? <laughs> I don't know. What? No, I'm genuinely curious. Like, is there a, a unique practice in your prayer life that maybe, you know, I, we don't know about? Pastor we do D. this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, for us, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, go, go. No, you, you go for it. Okay. okay. Uh, let me let me take a stab on it. You know, uh, we grew up very. You know, we I grew up in the '80s where there was a great divide between the Christians and the Catholics, and the and the narrative was, if you do the sign of the cross, you're Catholic. If you don't do the sign of the cross, you're a Christian. You know, so it's like, right? You go to a Catholic school. If you're a Christian, you don't do the sign of the cross, right? So it's like, that was the story. And I knew at, at the time I was kind of like questioning. I think there's something far deeper than that narrative that, you know, this is to identify your Catholic. And then when I started reading church history, I realized the sign of the cross was an early church sign, not actually by the Catholics, but by the early Christians. Because the Christians were being persecuted and they were, if you, if you identify with Christ and not with Caesar and the Roman government, you will be persecuted. Some of you will be burned at stake. Some of you will be eaten by lions. But then the Christians took a stand and said, we will identify with Christ. And one of the signs on the street to say that you are my brother. So if I live back then and I see you, Sam, on the street, I'll do this silently to say, I'm one of you. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Christ. Such a powerful symbol, right? And it's now being used in prayer to identify. And whether you're Protestant, you're Evangelical, you're Catholic, I do hope and pray every, every time you do the sign of the cross, you go back to the heart of that story that people identified with Christ and it was their business at stake. It was their reputation at stake so that when a Catholic prays and does the sign of the cross, I hope you understand that is a sign of surrender and a sign of death saying, Lord, I identify with you and that's why I'm doing this. So really it's not an issue for me. If a member of our church would do this or, or uh, a Protestant would do this because I know the story, I know the history of, of that, that symbol. It, and it's such a powerful symbol that prayer is actually surrendered to God. Prayer is saying, I cannot do things on my own. And that's why I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm dead to myself. And Christ is alive in me. And that's why I do it. Okay, I don't know what's going on today, but it's like every turn is super profound. And... <laughs> just kind of like whoa okay yeah. i think we read our bibles today <laughs> <laughs> there's something going on something is up okay instructor harold yes um one thing that i like about the podcast is that we're able to discuss things even though um some denominations practice it differently but we know how to respect each other's differences and the one unique thing that we do when we pray is that we think first upon the cross that Jesus bore for us to be able to cleanse us from our sins. And when we um, ask God and um, give our request from him, um, we also think about him on the throne and uh, really pouring our hearts to him And while we are communicating with him and asking the things that should be done according to his will. So that's basically how we pray. Yeah, you know what, the whole, you know, praying for God's will for my life, I think is a show of how you are maturing in the faith. Because I remember when I was starting out, and it was because I was in like this really difficult, fine, it was about a guy. But, um, you know, I <laughs> and I could totally... Can you care to expound on, on it so they can help you and pray with you, Sam? <laughs> No, like it's done. It's finished. You know, I'm over it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, for our next episode, <laughs> The Love Life of Sam. Yeah, uh, this is the last episode of our podcast, guys. No. Uh, 
But I can relate to what you were saying earlier. I think it was Pastor D who was saying, you know, in the, I started out with very selfish things that I was asking to God, like, you know, please give me this and give me that. And so when I was going through that experience, I was asking some of my friends who I knew were in the faith to pray for me about this. And there was one friend of mine who I knew was a very devout Christian. And so when I told her this, her answer to me was, you know what, I'm going to pray um, that God's will for this situation will happen. And I was so annoyed because that's not what I'm asking for, okay? Like I, what I'm asking for is for this situation to turn around because I have, a, I have a, a situation in my head, a desired situation in my head and it's what I wanted. But she was at a much higher level, obviously, of like, no, God's will is what we should desire because God is always giving us good things and we might not recognize it right away, but this life of faith is, is about that, is, I guess, desiring what God desires for us. Um, I, I want to move on now to, you know, the elements of prayer. When I was younger, I remember, because I went to Catholic school, and we, I think it was in school that I learned this, and I don't know if you've ever heard it, ACTS, the acronym ACTS, when you're praying, these are the elements that should be present, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, supplication, right? Which I think is a good you know, like basic blueprint for your prayer, but are there other things that you consider essential that we should include whenever we're praying to God? I'll start. Sometimes, you know, uh, I have, of course, acts, just, just like history acts, kind of, we just follow the Our Father prayer, like the, how do we, in the Bible, right? So in Our Father, heart in heaven. Sometimes, honestly, I don't have some, I don't have words. I, I just, Lord, I, I, I just really sit down or, you know, whatever. Sometimes I lie down. I just, just like, Lord, I'm, I don't know what to pray. I need you. And I, I, just, I just want to be with you. And I just can't deal with this problem or I don't know. I, I, I don't feel you, whatever. So there are many moments in my life that I just pray in silence, hoping that God is just going to, reveal himself to me in that moment. But there are also times in my life that I do an act as a prayer. So I, when I do things, it's like I'm praying. It's very, um, for Catholics, it's very Ignatian. Um, that's why some uh, Jesuits are very judged because they always act, they don't contemplate. Because uh, that's some, what some people do because for them, prayer is action. So, but anyway... For me, there are, whatever your religion is, or sorry, whatever your denomination is, there are different ways of praying. And the thing is, God is in everything. You can watch a non-Christian movie and feel, hey, I feel God's kindness there. You can be reading a non-Christian book, but, you know, feel God. You can be just laughing with your wife, your, your someone, and you feel God there. So it's really noticing God in everything. Ooh, I think maybe we touched on this a little bit. I remember, I think it was maybe Pastor D who was talking about like yeah, yeah. Uh, mixing the spiritual and the secular. Like it should constantly just be a presence in our lives. Pastor D, right? Yes. Yeah. I think even J. Paul mentioned that about the divide between the sacred and the secular, which should not be. And I think it's the same way with prayer. Uh, again, some errors of questions would be, how's your prayer life? Okay, so I have a prayer life, I have a non-prayer life, I have a party life. You know, we, we kind of like divide life. Uh, how's your Christian life? Don't forget the love life. Yeah, how's your love life? <laughs> but I, I believe if Jesus is center, it affects everything. So it's not really how's your prayer life, but do you have a praying life? A praying life doesn't have to have patterns or formulas. It's... It's in the mundane. And, and I think this is something that where God did something in me uh, two years ago. Because I live a very formulaic life. I'm Asian. I'm Chinese. Everything's formula, you know. You got to do this. Everything's academic for me. You know, I've memorized the verses. I've studied the Bible. I go to God with adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. But I knew if I do that to my wife, you know, she'll get mad, you know. Tell me my love. I confess to you my sin, you know, because it's not natural anymore. And as we grow in God, that's a good guide for babies. 
But as we continue to grow in fellowship with God, the formula fades away and you start to have that vibrant relationship with God. And this is where I want to introduce the concept of the God, in, God is in the mundane things of life. Because we love highlights. We love always uh, highlighting the highlights, the Instagrammable, the Facebook, the 10-minute summary of an NBA game, right? It's all uh, field goals made. You won't see the miss. You won't see the fouls. You won't see the messy things. Prayer is not like that. Prayer is very messy. Prayer is crying. It's repentance. It's idolatry being exposed. It's me being very vulnerable to the Lord. Me asking the Lord, Lord, I want to do what is right, but I don't do what is right. God, why am I doing this? That's prayer. If you look at David, the Psalms of David, you would see prayers of depression, prayers of, you know, so many prayers out there. The praying life is understanding that God is in the mundane. That when, I, when, when I'm walking, I could pray. When somebody's listening to a song, whatever kind of song, God speaks to him through that song. It's being aware of the presence of God every day of my life. And that's why the Bible tells us to pray continually or pray without ceasing. And if you pray without ceasing literally, then you won't eat, you won't sleep, you won't do anything, right? But pray without ceasing means having a praying life, not a prayer uh, time, right? But really having that praying life. Now, do you need the prayer time? I believe you need the praying, prayer time. But then it's more of a praying life that I can pray anytime I want and I come messy before the Lord and I lift up my burdens to Him and I intercede for people who have messes in their own lives and I become an intercessor for others. You know, that's, and that's for me is prayer. It's, it's so hard to define the prayer except that it's just like any relationship. I believe if we guys get closer to each other, there'll be times we'll be mad at each other, we'll have arguments, you know. But on once a week, we, we come with our best foot forward, you know, just the best things for an hour. But then it's different when you live with a person 24-7. And that's our relationship with God. He sees our 24-7. Oh, that's so good. It's yeah. Dr. Harold. Essential elements of prayer. Oh. Oh, he's not on mute. What? We can't hear you. Hello. Ayon, welcome back. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So I agree with Pastor Dennis when he said that the acts. That's actually a good formula to start with. But as you become mature in your life of faith, your prayer should also um, level up. When uh, and when I say level up, it it would be more mature, like. Uh, you would um, show your reverence to God and uh, that you would have that heart of repentance, that humility and even gratefulness, um, that you are thankful to God for all the blessings that you've been receiving. Even the life itself is already a great blessing. And also he mentioned about the pray continually. Um, yes, that's right. But if you literally take it that you need to pray continually, you won't be able to do the stuff you have to do in life. But what actually means is that you have to constantly seek God and ask for his guidance and how his will will be done in your life. Now, if I may just add about the elements of prayer, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, it says that the word and prayer consecrate everything that God has made. And uh, that means that these two should go together, the word and prayer. And Jesus himself said that if his words remain in us, then anything that we ask will be given to us. So Jesus also, uh, I think we've touched it a while ago, that Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Even a portion of that says that, um, give us today our daily bread. And yet, in the same chapter, in verse 31, he said, do not worry about what you will eat. So some people who, are, who could be new in reading the Bible, they might be confused. Why is Jesus telling us to pray for the daily bread and now telling us not, that we should not worry about what to eat. But what we have to understand in here is that in verse 31, when he reminded us not to worry what to eat, he is referring to the physical food that we should, we should not worry about those things. And then in verse 11, when he said, um, we need to ask God for our daily bread, he actually means himself or his word. How? In John chapter 6, this is the chapter where Jesus actually performed the miracles from 
uh, five uh, loaves of bread and two fish. And he was able to feed at least 5,000 people. And then that was on day one. The day after, these people actually came to him and asked for the food. And this is the time when Jesus explained to them, I am the bread of life. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then what would be the normal reaction of the people? What is this person saying? <laughs> How are we supposed to eat your flesh and drink your blood? And also, why are you saying that you are the bread of life? You are the bread coming from heaven. Unfortunately, in verse 66, it, it explained that those people turned their backs from Jesus and only uh, if you uh, read the following verses, it, it explains that only the 12 disciples remain. Why? Because those people who turned their backs to Jesus did not understand that Jesus was just speaking in parables. But the 12 disciples understood that when Jesus said that I am the bread of life, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he's referring to the words coming from Jesus, the spiritual food that they should be able to eat. And uh, that's why it's important for us to have the word when we pray because, um, again, this is uh, like a combination. And also when we talk about prayer uh, earlier, we've mentioned that this is like a communication. So it's two-way. It's supposed to be two-way. So if we only ask God about the things that we want, the things that we need, but we forgot to ask God, what is your will in my life? Is that considered two-way? Because... I know it should be two ways so that we can have that um, closer relationship with God. And that's why uh, praying is really important to constantly communicate with him. Okay. Lots to unpack there. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> first, <laughs> first, I'm going to read Matthew 6 again after this recording. My go-to verse for Matthew 6 is 33 because it was like, like a very inspiring, comforting verse for me when I was starting out in the faith life is, you know, seek first the kingdom and righteousness and everything will be added unto you, right? And I was like, yes, okay, I'm going to do that. Um, but you're right. There's a bit of a contradiction there, as you pointed out. Um, I, first question, because, you know, at this time, we're experiencing a pandemic all over the world. The livelihoods of people are affected this concern about food and, you know, basic necessities. This is a real concern. Um, is it, so is it wrong to pray for that stuff? Like based on what you said at this time? Actually, no. Um, on verse 31, Jesus said, just do not worry. He did not say, do not pray for these things because the pagans run after all these things. So it's more of a reminder that we must prioritize um, the more essential things, which is those um, spiritual things that only God can give and uh, that uh, physical food the uh, the physical uh, water or drink that we uh, that we can drink this is a thing these are things that God can provide to us and even on that same chapter he reminded that even the sparrows or the birds they don't worry about what they will have to eat because if they are precious in God's eyes what more to us who are his children so you don't have to worry about those things. So praying for those is fine. I'm not saying that it's bad at all. It's just a reminder for us to prioritize always um, things that only God can give. And then the rest, God already know what we need and uh, he will provide everything. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's easier said than done, but you're right. You know, this, you know, a big part of the faith life is to be able to trust that God will provide everything that we need, and he sees it all. Um, another interesting thing was the whole two-way. You know, a lot of people, myself included, when I'm praying, it's all just me talking, telling God, this is where I am, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I want. But you're right, communication is supposed to be a two-way thing. And so I guess my next question is, you know, how do we hear from God? Am I literally supposed to sit there after saying whatever I need to say and maybe kind of sit in silence and wait to hear something? Or yeah, and then speak? God will say, Sam. <laughs> so people claim to like, you know, hear God. I, not many, but apparently it happens, right? And I mean, so do you think that's good practice to sit in silence? I know a lot of like, uh, you know, Jedi Christians are really big on silence. <laughs> <laughs> I 
you know, I, I, I struggle with that, but I think it is important to hear from God. How do we do that? Yeah, I think it will always be good as long as uh, there is a base. It's, it's based on the Word of God and does not contradict the Word of God. I think there is a need for contemplative prayer. Many people are so busy, they, 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 they fast track their, their prayer time that they don't get to hear from God. At the same time, there are people who would be in silence and would be in meditation, but never really meditate on the Word of God. And therefore, uh, as, as we all know, the reality, spiritual reality, is the devil can also put thoughts in your mind, right, when it's empty. So it, it's really good, and it will be very, well, not good, but critical for a Christian who goes into contemplative prayer that he needs to have a knowledge of the Word of God. I'm not saying have a complete knowledge of the Word of God, but always ask the question, is this, does this thought that came in now while I'm in contemplative prayer contradicting the Word of God? Because if it contradicts the Word of God, then, then it's not from God, right? I could be in meditation and then the Lord tells me 20, 32, 68, 54. <laughs> and that's the lot of number, right? Example. So would I, God, is this you? But we all know it would contradict scripture because scripture tells us not to gamble, right? And God does not want us to gamble his money, right? And so now you know it's not from God. Or he would say, Dennis, you are the chosen one. You are now uh, the fourth of the Trinitarian, you know, of the Trinity, you know? So, and then I start my own cult, right? So that would be something that would contradict the word of God. Then you know it's not from God. But then I believe, again, and I call for Christians to have a time of contemplative prayer and meditation before the Lord. Yeah. And Chuck Harold? I love... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 Brother J. Paul, please. Sorry, just... Uh, I feel my heart's gonna burst if I don't speak. No, just kidding. Yeah. Um, I love what Pastor Dennis was saying... Um, just want to say something connected because you see the devil knows every prayer. He was with God, you know, and, and, and anyway, we, we've talked about it before. So I love what, and we've talked about always, I think in every episode, it always, we always hinge on our relationship with God because um, the devil can show you something good, but distract you away from God. I repeat, the devil can tempt you with something good, not, miserable or harmful but that can lead you away from god's glory so that's why we need the word of god that's why we need to understand him we need to have a relationship with god because also you know sometimes the devil people in ministry the devil will use the busy ministry work to lead you away from god and sometimes your ministry becomes your idol that ministry comes before god so it, everything hinges on our relationship and knowing God. So as I said, um, I never liked praying before when I was growing up because I would always fall asleep. But now understand, as a minister, I need a bit of contemplative prayer because I need to relax my mind. I need to be in the presence of God. But for me personally, I'd rather still pray in action. That's, that's how I just... I would read, I would, I would understand sometimes scripture when I'm lifting weights. That's just, you know, like sometimes I'm, I'm lifting weights and then like, huh? so that's what this verse was trying to tell me. That, that's just how my, because I'm so kinesthetic and then visual. So I, I understand the word of God when I'm, when I'm moving, when I'm, when I'm understanding something, when I'm doing something. So, so that's just really to add on to what Pastor Dennis say. It is not a Catholic, Evangelical, Pentecostal, Baptist. It is a Christian thing to have a relationship with God, and that's how you grow your prayer life. Instructor Harold. Uh, yes, uh, if we're talking about like you are waiting for God's voice um, to guide you, um, I've heard some people said that, but not every one of us, honestly, uh, was able to experience that. So. We have to find a solution or a way in order for us to know God's will for us. And that's why we have the Bible. God has given this to us because in the Bible, we should find his heart. We should find the will he wants for us. And that's why um, 
we are going back to understanding it would enable us to know God's will in our lives. And then when we understand it clearly, we will be able to uh, pray according to God's will that is in the Bible. Right. So what I'm getting so far is, yes, there is a need for contemplation. Uh, we do live in a very noisy world right now and things get drowned out. So take some time to contemplate on these things. And also scripture is really important. Which reminds me of something I heard when I was, again, you know, early in my faith, because the, the term relationship keeps coming up, right? And why are we communicating with God? It's because we want this relationship with God. And in any relationship with anyone in your life, yeah, if you want to maintain a relationship, there needs to be communication, right? And it's the same thing with God. And the way we can get to know more about God is through reading the Bible, because, you know... It's, it's like when I meet somebody for the first time and I want to get to know this person, I need to keep spending time with them and I need to converse with them. And the goal is you guys get so close that, you know, I hear this person's voice and I know immediately, oh, this is, this is him or, or her. I'd rather it be him. But, um, or I would see the back of this person's head and I'd be able to recognize right away, oh, this is my friend. And the equivalent of that um, I think this was Bishop Barron, who obviously I'm a fangirl of, um, was saying, and this can happen if you spend time with God and you do that by reading scripture. So yeah, it's familiarizing myself with who is God? What does he will for my life? Um, and then I think another thing that I want to add to that is because for me, I find that God speaks to me in the circumstances of my life. Would you agree to that? Agree, agree, true. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, again, it goes back to the mundane, in the everyday of life. It could be a remark that your son makes, or it could be while walking in the garden, you see a flower and God speaks to you. So in so many ways, uh, God speaks to us, right? And, and when you talk about that, I just want to point out that prayer, as much as it is a duty, we want it to become a delight. And I think there's a big difference between it's a it's my duty to pray and it's my delight to pray. Mm. Right? The love of the Lord is my delight. Is it my duty to read the word? Yeah, but it is also my delight when I'm in, in the presence of God. And I think for many that's why they have they find prayer boring. It's because it's a duty. And I go through ACTS, you know, and I do this stuff and I memorize those prayers. Though I do memorize prayers, by the way. But then uh, when it becomes a delight, it's something far more uh, uh, beautiful and experiential, which God wants us to have, an experience with Him, right? So, and I think our, my duty as a Christian is to create that space so that it becomes a delight, right? And maybe to illustrate that, like this corner of our house is podcast space, Right? So this is my space. Right? This was nothing before. And we just have to make it this way because our house is full of glass. So it's always against the light. And this is the only part with no glass. But then when I'm here, I've created a space that from, for two hours, I'm shooting a podcast. It's the same way with prayer. I need to create that space. My Bible's there. My coffee's there. There's ample lighting. Why? I want to spend time with, with my Abba Father, with my Lord. And so I create that space for God to come and that we can have coffee and conversation together. Man, I don't know if I'm there yet where prayer is a delight. I'm going to work on that. That's um, why we're friends. Because, you know, uh, no, I mean. Honestly, you too? It's not a delight. No, <laughs> no, no it's, it's really, that's, that's what discipleship is. It's growing together. Like, you know, the yoke, the, the, the verse. It's, you know, the old will, will bring the new to Jesus. So I don't know who's the old one here. So I'm, that's why I'm trying to, just to, add, uh, just to really share, um, I guess, for a time in my life, I really church hopped. I, 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 I thought about converting to other um, denominations. And even now, um, as, a, as a feast builder, Bo, Brother Bo tells us to just be in relationship with different denominations. And I've been to Victory Green Hills. I've been to Victory Fort. I've been to Hillsong. I've been to Saddleback. I've been to different churches. 
I've been to that traditional Catholic church. We know we have our our, our prayer meetings in, in the cinema of, of Green Hills. No. Because of my relationship with God, I know that He's the same God I pray to in different locations, different denominations that I'm worshiping with. And that's because I, in, you know, in my faith journey, I have delved deeper in my relationship with God. And that is what I encourage everyone who is joining us in this podcast to really that's, to tell that all the time, to really journey with God. And as, the, as, as you get to know God more, you will know His face. It is the face of love, the, the, love, the, the man who gave up heaven. His, look, God gave up heaven for us. He went down to us. So we think that it's, you know, God, it's for the honor of God that we go to him. No. He went down first to us. He always comes down to us first. And what God is just doing, he's always waiting for us to be ready to commune with him. Mm-hmm. Amen. All right. I want to also discuss the differences that we might have. Um, as Christians in the way we pray, right? Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of the rosary. Um, I like, I think, I, I don't know if you, you know, Instructor Harold or Pastor Dennis in your churches, you guys pray those memorized prayers because in the Catholic tradition, we have a lot of those. We have devotions, we have novenas. And um, I guess before we get into the specifics, I'm curious, there's prayer that we do, you know, spontaneously. We express things in our own words, just, you know, freestyle it. And then there's, you know, that stuff where there's, you know, a, a formula, there's repetition. You know, I'm like one of those weirdos that likes rules. I kind of thrive doing that. I'm into that. But is one effective, more effective than the other, you think? I, I think, think the Catholic who has rules, I, no. No. It's really, we, I mean, just because I, I think as a Catholic, I can answer. Anyway, you can answer, guys. Um, no. Uh, no, because this is an issue for Catholics. A very, and it is really. <laughs> I really he has many up, feelings, uh, okay? He has many feelings, okay. <laughs> Brother <laughs> James. If your heart is in the right place, you, you, you pray the rosary, the formal prayer, in, 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 a, in a space of worship for God, then that's really amazing that. You know, my, my wife and I pray together the formula prayers, but it's because I hate this about some Catholics that you pray the rosary and you shout at your maid. That is not prayer. Dude, that is not prayer. And, and, and prayer leads you to goodness, compassion, mercy. So I, I urge you to pray the prayers that change your heart. Whether it, you can start with the formula prayers, and then you move on, to, move on deeper to relational prayers. I'm sorry, this is really, I think, that I really need to preach about this because, you know, we, we get a bad rap and, you know. I think it's not so much like the, you know, repetitive or formulaic prayers themselves. It's just, you know, where is the heart of this person? Are you praying this to just, you know, take it off a checklist? Or is it really transforming you and changing you? Um, yeah, Instructor Harold, you were, I think, about to say something too. Yes, uh, actually, I agree that not one is preferable over the other. Uh, on our church, we also do uh, the same thing. Uh, we have a, a memory prayer, which is the Lord's Prayer, because this was taught by Jesus. And then most of our prayers were the freestyle form of prayer, because at the end of the day, we believe that what's important is we, we have the word of God as we talk to him and as we pray. Okay. Pastor D? Yeah, I think, uh, again, no one size fits all, right? But then you just have prayer, just have guidelines. Number one, uh, does this prayer, uh, does this uh, contradict the word of God? Number one, right? If I'm going to pray this memorized prayer, would this contradict the word of God? Or is it... You know, is it biblically sound if I pray this prayer? And I think that's one guideline that we can, you need to ask before you pray something, right? Uh, maybe secondly, you have to check your heart. Why are you praying that prayer? 
right? So, and Filipinos have many prayers, not just Catholic, but even animistic prayers, right? Right? You pray to the to the rain <laughs> god, you know, you do that, you know. So, you, you would ask yourself, why go there when you can go to the one who created rain, right? And ask God to spare you from the flood. And so, I think again, it's asking the right questions, rather, and and asking who is the object of my prayer? Yeah? Who's the subject of that prayer? Who am I praying to? Uh, and I think that's where some of the differences are. Yeah. Speaking of the subject of your prayer, let's talk about the saints. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as Catholics, we have a spiritual family that we call the saints. We like to pray to Mama Mary. And um, I know that this is not something that we have in common. And that's cool. But I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, well, maybe Brother J. Paul, you might want to start. I mean, how would you kind of explain to our Christian brothers and sisters what we do as Catholics when we pray to the saints? And that does. <laughs> so, um, go, did we go back to uh, the Apostle's Creed? Apostle's Creed, uh, um, communion of saints. So there are three types of um, churches, all right? Church triumphant, that those are the capital S, those are already the guys in heaven. So we don't really know most of them. Are if, like, we don't know if your grandfather's in heaven. So that's the, really the people who are uh, in heaven. The second church is the church penitent, those who we believe are in purgatory. Um, and the last is church militant, that's us, those who are still living. We're, we're actually all saints in Christian tradition. We're small s. We are called to live a saintly life. So uh, we, we believe that um, in the end times, we will be one unified church. That's, that's how we believe. And, and as I think I've said this before, that um, uh, we do not honor them as gods, as they have power. But we pray in remembrance that they, they remind us, they bring us closer to God. Uh, my weird uh, analogy before was they are our Avengers. They are our Jose Rizals, uh, George Washington. They, they remind us of how we should be in, in, um, uh, as, as Christians. And some of them were able to perform you know, certain types of miracles, but not because of their power, but because of the shared glory given by God, because of you know well, their pious living, they were able to wow. They were able to heal the sick or or something like that. But we do not pray to them. Um, we do not. We don't pray to them because we want. We give them glory. No, we, we just hey, you know, this is the life. Um, for example, my alma mater, John Baptist de la Salle. Um, why why do why do I remember him? Because he's the saint of teachers. Um, he reminds us that, that his life reminds us that the uneducated needs to be educated. That's charity. So we remember them of a way of living. Yeah. yeah. We have some really random patron saints. Do you know there's a patron saint for unattractive people? Saint Drogo, don't pray to him. Because you know what that means about you if you pray to him. <laughs> I did not know that. Thank you, Sam. I don't know yes. me researching about those things. Oh, yeah. Like, I was just randomly looking for, like, who are the patron saints? Oh, unattractive people. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, so, yeah, as Catholics, that's where we're coming from, you know? And um, we, we don't worship them as God, obviously. Um, that's idolatry, which we'll be talking about in the next episode. But we feel like, you know, we have this family and they can intercede for us. I think that's the word is intercession, right? And it's really the same idea as me asking a friend to pray for me because I'm going through something. It's the same thing. And so, yeah, Pastor D, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> you really want to know my thoughts I do. About it. <laughs> I really do. I really do. <laughs> no. Maybe it's like this. I know this might be controversial, right? And yeah. uh, and I think there's this is where some of the doctrines would really take into effect. Like, do I pray to a dead person? Like when I, I'm from La Salle, and so the statement, St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. 
I think theologically, I cannot make that statement. It would go against everything in my fiber because of how the scripture guides me. Because I do not pray to a dead person. I pray straight. And the Lord says, if you pray, pray this way and pray in the name of Jesus. And that's why I think Christians, uh, evangelicals would pray in Jesus' name. Right? So I think those are some of the theological... Uh, those are some of the theological differences we might have with the Catholics when it comes to prayer. Like we believe that the uh, Mama Mary is blessed among all women. We respect, adore her. Yes, but we do not pray to her. Right? We pray to, to God, the Father, in, in Jesus' name. I think that's the difference that we have because... There's nowhere in scripture that we pray to saints and that's why we don't do that. Yeah, right? that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm offended, but whatever. Instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Instructor. <laughs> You're okay. Yes. So uh, for us, if we look in, in the Bible, the saints are those people who have the word of God. They are e Many of them actually even gave up their lives to do the will of God and we believe that they are already in heaven and they are the ones sharing um, the believers of God during this time, especially if um, we are going through uh, hard times, they are there in the heaven cheering on us and looking uh, on us and would want us to really overcome and be um, strong whenever there are difficult circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Um, I heard this thing, and I don't know, maybe it's a little silly, but I heard that um, when you pray the rosary while you're, when you fall asleep praying the rosary, it's okay because an angel will finish it for you. <laughs> Brother G, have you ever heard this? Uh, anyway, let's not discuss those things. <laughs> but... For, I, I guess really the theological difference comes, and I respect you, my brothers, and I, I love you the same. I guess it comes from our Bible. We have uh, it, the praying with the dead, or is comes from the Book of Maccabees, with which is which um, our brothers don't have. So it comes from that. Um, th this is a book that I haven't mastered uh, reading, but it comes from that. So maybe I'll get back to you, Sam, and everyone when I have really understood that 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 book this idea of like the angels praying for you is that something that you have encountered oh. um uh, well theologically it might not be again if you look at scripture that might not be possible because even in scripture it tells us we are higher than angels right god's created uh, hu human beings are higher and we will be the one who will judge the angels with god in the end time so so it's just hard that he is the one praying for me if I don't finish my prayer. And I think God knows if I don't finish my prayer, right? Yeah. If I probably. fall asleep, God knows that I'm tired and he'll understand. Yeah. Instructor Harold. Uh, if I can just add something in what we're discussing right now. Um, in the Bible, uh, we can see that the angels can also see the desires of, or what's in our heart and also... Um, in Revelation, if you go in there, it says that the angels are the ones that will actually bring our prayers to God. So that's how we look at it in the scripture. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, yeah, I, I got some really, um, I got a lot of questions about prayer answer today on the show. And, you know, I appreciate that always. Maybe a good way to end um, this episode is how or what advice or tips do you guys have on how everyone can enrich their prayer life? Scripture. <laughs> Ooh, uh, elaborate. Scripture. Yes. I don't know. It's just really, really scripture. Um, if, you know, the, the daily readings for the Catholic is not the end all in view. It's a starting point. So we, we read the daily gospel as a way to start reading the Bible, but then you, you really do the Bible study and all of those things. So, so read the Bible, um, have a, just really pray. Um, if you can't pray 10 minutes, start with one. One minute, then maybe two minutes, three minutes. It's just like exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. 
uh, if you really can't pray, you don't know what to pray, just start with pray, uh, with gratitude. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I love you. All of those things. So, it will grow in time. Yeah, Instructor Harold. Uh, yes, uh, I think the the best tip we can provide to our listeners right now is to pray the righteous prayer, which I discussed earlier. But um, if I may just discuss the opposite of that, the unrighteous prayer, because we have to learn about it as well, that so that we will not do this according to the scriptures. And if we, if we will go to Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 31 to 33, it says that we should not worry about what we should be eating, what we should be drinking or be wearing, because the pagans are running after all these things. And yet, um, Jesus said that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. So that means that it's important for us to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. But how can we do that? We should have the knowledge. Um, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2, even if we have the desire, but if we don't have the knowledge, it is not good for God. And if, if we are zealous and we are doing everything for God, we're so passionate in our work for God, but if we don't have knowledge, unfortunately, according to the scripture, it's still not good in the eyes of God. So um, we should learn from this. And even in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, it says that if one turns deaf ear in the instruction of God, his prayer is detestable. So the instruction, the word, um, the understanding, the knowledge is very important. And what kind of um, prayer is detestable to God? It's when our motives are wrong. Um, James chapter 4, verse 2 and 3 explains it clearly that when we do not have because we don't ask God. And yet, when we ask God, we don't receive because we ask with wrong motives because we will be using this for our pleasure. So these are the things that we should avoid. And these things are also um, things that already happened in the past. Um, the Israelites in Isaiah chapter 1, when they were um, worshiping God, praying to God, offering sacrifices to God, and yet God hid his eyes from them. Why? Because their deeds were evil in the eyes of God. Even though they were raising their hands to God, God does not answer their prayers. So this is something we have to reflect upon ourselves. God is talking to them, and yet God hid his eyes from them because their deeds were evil. So Jesus himself as well taught us that we should not be praying like pagans that just keep on babbling and we should not pray like the hypocrites that would want to be seen in public. So um, Jesus during that time was shocked because why are the people praying like pagans? And as true believers, we should not pray like pagans and um, we should learn to do the right thing because that's the prayer that will be accepted by God. One last, one good example of prayer that... Uh, we can look, uh, we can find in the Bible is the prayer of Solomon. King Solomon, one of the wisest person that ever, uh, that ever lived, actually asked God to have a discerning heart to govern his people and also to know how to distinguish right from wrong. And when he prayed to God that way, God um, was moved that he answered that prayer of Solomon. And not only that, he also gave him power, um, wealth, and even honor. So as we pray to God, we, we have to re reflect upon ourselves. We should be praying like uh, what um, a, a believer of God should do and not pray like pagans. So I think that's the tip that I want to remind everyone. Oh, that's a new goal. Pray so that you know, we can move God's heart. My goodness, a little lofty, but you know, we can try. Pastor D. Yeah, maybe let me end with a quote from, a, from my most favorite book on prayer called The Praying Life by Paul Miller. He says, prayer is bringing your helplessness to Jesus. We forget that helplessness is how the Christian life works. The gospel, God's free gift of grace in Jesus, only works when we realize we don't have it all together. The same is true of prayer. The very thing we are allergic to, our helplessness, is what make pray, makes prayer work. It works because we are helpless. 
we can't do life on our own. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? It's, what's been so enlightening about this conversation about prayer was that, I don't know, I think I started out this conversation thinking prayer is, you know, it starts that moment when I pick up my rosary or open with, you know, you know, Heavenly Father and blah, blah, blah. And it ends the moment I say, Amen. But I think from our conversation today, it really is so much more than that. Like, ideally, it would encompass our whole life. I, you know, ideally, it would include, you know, many other people in my life. Um, and also, the bit about scripture has been so significant to me. It's kind, and it made me reflect on how, you know, it really does work like a relationship in my life where here's a person that maybe I keep asking things from this person, but then I don't even know him. And you know, that's just not going to work. And so just many things running through my head right now, but you know, that's some great advice that we got from you guys. And I thank you so much as always for um, enriching our faith life through these conversations. Before we end, Brother J. Paul, I know you have some good news. You signed up with the Podcast Network Asia, right? Tell us about the show. Yeah, so uh, we're just signed with Podcast Network Asia. It's going to be J. Paul Hernandez podcast. So I already have one um, episode I do every Monday. It's called Man on a Mission. We interview different guys about you know topics on manhood. So we're also figuring out new topics or stuff to talk about or bring out just to bless you and inspire people right now with especially uh, life even after pandemic people need god's word so the mission does not change we're still here to give glory to god and you know baptize people in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit so do you have a title for this show already uh, the, they said it's going to be Jaypal Hernandez podcast we, we're figuring it out we're going to have a production meeting next week Okay, so this is still in the works. We're going to keep you posted, obviously. Pastor D, where do we find you? Yeah, you can search us at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Victory Green Hills. That's our church. And also for my personal uh, website, it's called Act Like a Man, which is also in YouTube and in Facebook. Instructor Harold, how do people get in touch with you guys? Yes, um, you can send us an email, contact.nhmeph at gmail.com, or you can follow me at Twitter and Facebook, Harry Reschel. All righty. Okay, you guys can reach me as well. We have an email, the narrow door podcast at gmail.com. You know, the show, I don't know where you guys are listening to this, if you're watching us on YouTube, on Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. But if you're having internet connections, there's a patron saint for that as well, Saint Isidore. Okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye. And I would love to hear from you as well. So shoot me an email, the narrow door podcast at gmail.com.